Hey everybody, so in this video I want to show you guys how to depin the C101, uh, the C191 in the diagnostic connector in the uh, BMW E30 uh, engine harness. Uh, they all use the same 4mm circular pin here and it can be pretty difficult to find a depinning tool. I actually ended up just making one. I have a 3D printer, I machined some parts and I'm actually selling these. So if you're just looking for the tool, you can go follow the link in the description. It's falkmfg.com. You can pick up this tool. It's only $29.99 plus shipping. Uh, the original BMW tool is like $65 plus shipping. So this is a great alternative. Uh, I mean, you can, make, you can make one yourself, but I mean, for the time and effort, I feel like it's just worth buying this one since it's cheap enough. Um, you're also going to need a pair of needle nose pliers. This is to... Uh, unlock the back of your connector. Some people don't know this, but these connectors actually lock. If it's fully clockwise, that means it's locked. Uh, and then in order to unlock it, you have to go counterclockwise. And I'll show you what that looks like on this. But basically, it's really simple. With all the connectors, the first thing you want to do is make sure that they're unlocked. This one, this little nub right here, is in the middle position, which means it's unlocked. If I go ahead and rotate it clockwise with these needle nose pliers, it is going to be into the lock position. So now you can see that little tooth is all the way on the right side. So now it's locked. So if I go ahead and put my tool in here and try to push out the connectors, if I try to pull them out, it's not going to work. It's just, they're just not going to come out. But if all I have to do is go back here, rotate it back where it was before, And now it's going to be unlocked. So I can go ahead and push my tool in here, press the plunger, the pin's going to fall out. I can go ahead and do that with a male one. This tool works for male and female pins. Go ahead and do it, push it, and they're both going to come out. And it's easy as that. This uh, tool, it goes in there, it depresses the uh, wings on the end of the connector, and then it has this push rod to push the wire out of the back of the connector. And then I'll show you guys what happens real quick if you if you rotate it all the way counterclockwise you can see that there's a two-piece design to this connector so when you when you go all the way clockwise it locks the connector in place and this I mean is just to show you how it's very important that you unlock your connector otherwise they're not going to go anywhere and when you re when you reinsert your new connector and stuff you can go ahead and lock it if you want to uh, from what I've seen it really doesn't matter too much these pins are really robust and they're not going to come out unless you depin them. So uh, there's that for you guys. Um, and then I also want to go over the crimping uh, of these of these pins. So you can buy individual female or male pins like this uh, on FCP Euro or any website like that. Uh, one thing you should know though is that they're going to be different gauge sizes. So there's different part numbers. Some of them have a smaller channel, some of them have a larger channel, and that's because they're going to accept different wire gauges. So whenever you're thinking about adding accessories uh, through this connector or anything like that, you want to buy a couple of different gauge sizes of wire so that you make sure you have the right ones. And uh, in the link below, I'll provide a link for this tool and also uh, some of the different pin numbers for these and uh, for the different gauge sizes. So with these guys, if you want to, you can kind of do it crudely just by stripping the wire off and getting a pair of pliers and crimping them down. Uh, but that's pretty unreliable. So if you are going to just, if you don't want to buy the special crimp tool, but you want to be able to crimp your connector and have it be solid, I recommend you, you know, you strip it off, you put it in here, you crimp it down with pliers, but then you also add a tiny bit of solder, just but, uh, and that's going to make a permanent connection between this connector and here. You want to be really careful you don't get any solder inside of this because there's some really uh, fragile, uh, uh, flexible steel in here which is actually going to grab the walls of the connector and make it work. So if you do solder, be extra careful to only get it uh, in the uh, terminal side uh, where the wire goes. If you do want to crimp it down uh, mechanically, uh, you can get a pair of these crimpers on Amazon uh, for pretty cheap. It's like 25 bucks, and you get multiple different jaws. Uh, this is the jaw type that you're going to want to use for these connectors. Um, the way it works is you kind of, the, the large channel, the, the channel in the front is where you're going to want to put this, this, the back end of the connector, and then the channel up here in the front is going to want to go in the smaller section. And you just kind of put that in there 
like that. And then you want to get your wire, you want to get your wire ready. So I have these fancy pants uh, strippers, but you really don't need that. You want to strip off a very little amount. You don't really need a lot. And then all you're going to do is make sure you're in place, put this in there, and then squeeze down. And um, you know, this wasn't the perfect crimp job. It does take a couple of tries to try and get it exactly perfect, exactly how you want it. But you can kind of go up and touch it up. You can also play with how hard this is going to squeeze down. So you might want to go in the next smaller channel and, uh, and crimp it down again to make sure it's, it's really good and, and crimped. Um, So you can see that it, the, the back end of this connector or the back end of this connector is going to crimp onto the actual insulation material that provides some stress relief. And then on the very inside there, you can see that uh, it's crimping down on the actual bare copper and that's providing uh, the electrical contact. And then you just go ahead and you put that in there and then you're good to go. Obviously you're gonna use a lot longer wire than this, um, but that, that pretty much shows you that you can, I mean, if you have this tool, if you have wire, if you have these connectors, you can, you can play with these connectors all day long. You can fix your C191 for corrosion, um, and it's pretty easy to do. So if you guys have any questions, let me know. Uh, once again, the link to this tool uh, on my website, I'll link it down below in the description. And then I'll also link the, all the different uh, terminals with the wire gauges, that way you guys can easily find all the connections you want. So uh, that's going to conclude it for this video. Thanks for watching and uh, thanks for supporting me. Appreciate it. Bye.